Now that we've discussed the controls on the machine itself, now we'll go on to the probe. The probe is a very important piece of the entire ultrasound setup, and it's really important that you take good care of it. We'll go through first some of the features of the probe itself, and then also the movements that you are able to perform with the probe while performing the exam. First off, for this type of, of examination, we will be using a curvilinear probe. Um, this particular type is a microconvex probe. What's quite good about this is it has quite a small footprint, which is the, the scanning surface of the probe, also called the transducer. What's good about having a small footprint is that you're able to really get up underneath, say, the rib cage to be able to, to get a really good image of a structure such as the liver. Another good thing about this type of probe is that it will be very useful for a wide range of patients, um, all the way from, from cats to, to larger dogs. This particular probe has multi-frequency capability, which means that you can actually change the frequency that's being emitted from the probe itself. This is important because higher frequencies are used for better resolution, but they also do not penetrate as deeply within the tissues. Conversely, a lower frequency will actually not give as great detail, but is able to penetrate much further. And so even in one particular animal, things that are, are closer to the surface that you're wanting to look at, you can actually go down to a lower, uh, higher frequency, I apologize. And for deeper structures, say deep within the liver parenchyma itself, you'll want to use a, a lower frequency. This is something that can also be changed on the machine. So there's one particular feature that we need to note about the, the probe itself, and that's this marker just here. If in this particular probe, it has a finger notch along with the, the surface. And the reason this is important is because it corresponds to a blue dot on the monitor of the machine itself. And this will help you to orientate the image when you're actually performing the ultrasound examination so that you don't have to keep looking at the dog and looking at the screen. You can know exactly where you are at all times. There are two basic grips that you can have on the ultrasound probe. The first is placing your thumb on the marker and grasping it lightly with the remainder of your hand. The other grip is the pencil grip. That's where you put your index finger in the groove near the marker. Whichever of these grips feels most comfortable to you is the one that you should use, and you might actually use them interchangeably throughout the entirety of the abdominal ultrasound exam. Most of the time, I prefer to use this grip. One important feature to, to note about these probes is that they're very delicate. The crystals that actually emit the ultrasound waves are quite sensitive, and it's important that you don't damage them in any way. Um, that means don't bash them off the table. And also, the surface of this is covered with a, a type of, of rubber substance, so you don't want to use surgical spirit because it will degrade it over time. Now we'll go on to some of the movements that you can perform while doing an ultrasound examination. This will help to examine every organ in a very thorough and methodical manner to know that you're absolutely seeing everything that you should do. So some of the movements, which there are five, the first is rocking. What rocking is, is placing the probe on the patient and moving it side to side. This is along the surface of the crystals or the footprint itself. I'll show that again. The second movement that we can do is called fanning. And this is in, say, a 90 degree angle to the rocking motion which we just described. In fanning, the motion that you use is the probe on the patient and you fan up and you fan down. Again, that's up and down. And you'll notice that the probe doesn't actually move along the patient at all. 
A third movement that you can do is sliding. And sliding is where the surface of the probe actually does move along the patient. And it sounds, it's exactly what it sounds like. You slide the probe in one direction. A fourth movement that you can do is rotation. And this is placing the probe on the surface and rotating 90 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise. And the last movement that you can do is pressure. And it's very important to realize that this is a movement because it will make a tremendous difference to the quality of your image as you go throughout your abdominal ultrasound examination. And pressure is either increased amount of pressure or decreased amount of pressure. And we'll demonstrate this in a bit. So those are the five movements that you can perform with the ultrasound probe.